now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord. Ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breath. That skirts are so tight and so short. And I can't even, I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on. I don't think it's empowering to show off, you know, myself in a really scandalous, promiscuous way. A big thing for me was I loved to dress worldly. I loved the shortest shorts, the tightest tops, the croppest crop. That modesty is so much bigger than um, what the traditional church has made it seem. But, but today I'm going to talk about modesty and I feel like this is such a controversial topic to talk about. I am not here to make you feel shameful or condemned for dressing in a certain way for being Hey, what's up everyone? It's Peter or RZ Apologist as many of you might know me as. Today I'll be discussing the topic of modesty. Now when it comes to modesty, it's a very, like the lady in the intro said, it's a very controversial topic, uh, mainly because you have Protestants and certain groups of Protestants will tell you that you can wear whatever you want. Then you have the other group of Protestants that say you have to basically dress like Mother Mary, right, in the scriptures. And then you have Catholics, uh, traditional Catholics, of course, that dress in the tradition of the church, right? Very traditional. You have to cover your, your body, basically, and cover your hair. And also, for the guys, they also have to dress modest. They can't be revealing. Uh, some of them can't even wear shorts. Um, then you have, of course, you have different groups. Yeah, but I want to point at a scriptural and historical basis when it comes to modesty. Yeah, and we're going to do exactly that in this video. So I want you guys to open up your Bible to 1 Timothy 2, 9, 10. Now let's read this verse. And it says, quote, Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel. Huh, respectable. Okay. Now let's say, let's say a girl, she's the age 20, all right? And she's wearing um, gym shorts. Right, and not the guy type of gym shorts, the ones women wear nowadays to the gym, which is basically just boxers, very tight boxers, um, or even yoga pants, you know what I mean? And let's say she's also wearing like, um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like that little bra thing. It's a bra, but it covers, you know what, and a little bit to the bottom, but it shows your tummy um, and your a lot of the, the chest area. And let's say she goes like that to um, a meeting or even school or even a job. So... If she goes like that, even if the people there aren't Christian, yeah, and if they're adults with common sense, they're going to be like, what are you wearing? Yeah. Do you res like they're going to be like, do you even respect yourself? You know, they're going to be like, what is that? And maybe not so much nowadays because people don't care. Yeah. People do not care anymore. But again, that's why I said people with common sense, because people with common sense will be like, what is she wearing? Go back in your house and put on some clothes. Yeah. Now, let's say somebody's wearing, um, uh, let's say somebody's wearing a veil. Yeah. Um, or Muslim, they wear the hijab. Yeah. And they're covered up. It doesn't have to be a, a complete a cab, which is basically where they cover their full face and you can only see their eyes. But let's say they're wearing a hijab and the, or the Christian woman is wearing the veil and covering the bottom. Right. And she goes, to a meeting right uh or school or uh an event people are going to be like whoa that girl is modest yeah that girl actually respects herself right and fathers are going to be like that you know whoever the father of that girl is really taught her good rules and taught her good things such as covering herself yeah people are going to show her respect you know and guys a lot of guys are going to want to marry that woman I'm, I'm telling you, a lot of guys are going to want to marry that woman because many guys, if you're a guy in here, you know that you want a modest woman. You want her to respect herself, cover herself like the scripture tells her to and out of respect, not only for herself, but for the husband. Yeah. You don't want plenty of guys seeing what your man is supposed to be seeing only. 
right? A guy wants a girl that respects herself, man, and dresses modest. But the point is, that woman that dresses modest is going to get a lot of more respect compared to the woman that dresses like a like a stripper. You know what I mean? Basically, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Women are dressing like strippers nowadays. They're dressing like escorts, and it's terrible. All right, but it's become normalized slowly and slowly. These things have become normalized to the point where people will probably start walking out their houses naked. Now, you guys might be like, no, we're not. We just want to just because we're wearing yoga pants or shorts that are literally boxers and they're compressed and we're walking outside with that. It doesn't mean we're going to walk naked, but I highly doubt that. And the reason why I say that is because in California and in New York and a few other places, such as even Atlanta, um, you have LGBT, LGBTQ, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, um, that they're the main one pushing this whole thing of, you know, show revealing clothing and, you know, wear less clothes. And um, it's like the leftist agenda, right? Not very conservative, not very Christian. And... They go outside in these events butt naked. Like, you can literally see their butt cheeks. And you can see their private parts. And their chest. And it's like... You abomination. Son of the devil. Right? Just like their father the devil, they want to disobey God. Now, a lot of them might not know that. Right? But I, I, I highly doubt that. Because it's like, you know, you're disrespecting the man above which is our lord and savior and you know it's going against christianity and you know people don't want to see that the only people that want to see that is the other demonically possessed deluded humans just as yourself that are going to these events right but these people must know that they're disrespecting the higher the higher up the higher being right our lord um but they do it anyways but these are the people that are pushing that agenda yeah and you know, they're already dressing naked. Well, not dressing, but they're already naked. You know, they're already naked. They're going to these places naked. And I might show some photos and censor them, but they're already doing that. And that's what they want people to do. Right? So, back in the 90s or early 2000s, it was rare to see that many women dressing like that. Now, you might you might have some women. I'm not going to lie. You might have a lot of women still dressing a modest in the early 2000s. Um, that's really where it kind of started. Even in the nineties, it's kind of where it started, but it wasn't as bad. Women would cover way more, right? They might wear jeans, but it was way better than going outside in boxers, basically. Um, which it's still not good. It's now it's still not good in general. I think that women should not wear jeans. And the reason why I think women shouldn't wear jeans is because it's tight. It's, uh, it's tight, Right. And you might say, yeah, but I'm covering. Well, it's like saying if a guy, right, wears super compressed clothing, super, and I mean super compressed, like very tight. And let's say he gets erected and he's outside. Everybody's going to see his, his thing, you know, and that's perverted. And you get to see his form of his upper body, which causes some women to lust. Right, and the whole point is to avoid lust. The whole point of modesty, right, is so people can avoid lust and temptation. Yeah. So anyway, let's keep reading. Sorry if I got a little off track. So it says respectable apparel with modesty and self-control. Okay. Self-control obviously, yeah, means you don't fall into your temptation. Oh, but Oh, but I, I want to wear the shortest crop, and I want to wear this and that, and I want guys to see me, and I want guys to to pay attention to me and give me all their attention and give me validation, right? First off, like I said earlier, guys don't like that, right? They don't want a woman that looks like an escort or like a stripper, right? That's terrible. No guy wants that, and if they do, that should tell you a lot about the guy, right? Most most likely, he doesn't care about you. Okay, so have control, dress modest, cover yourself, right, and have modesty. Okay, and it says not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, 
all that's that's basically hinting at um, be, people being materialistic. Yeah. So pa- basically, women that uh, are materialistic, like, oh, I want to wear uh, Versace or I want to wear Louis Vuitton or I want to buy this and that and I want the most ex- expensive clothing out there and I just I just want to look like a Hollywood celebrity even though I don't have Hollywood celebrity type of money, right? And even then, even if you had that money, it should never be going into that clothing, right? Because first off, these people spend, for example, for like a $2,000 Louis Vuitton purse, people in China make it for $10 or less, and they just sell it to you for thousands of dollars. Well, there's people in Africa, right, starving to death. Well, there's people in Iraq starving to death. People in Mexico, certain places in Mexico probably even starving to death. <laughs> what well, people in America are starving to death. You have homeless people by the tons. Yeah. So don't waste your money on that garbage. All right. Just make sure it's somewhat nice clothing. All right. You can find a lot of nice clothing for cheap. Okay. So don't be materialistic is what that message right there is saying. And then it says, but with what is proper for women who professes godliness with good works. So it's saying faith without works is dead. Okay. Because it just said with good works. It's saying have good works. And one of those works is modesty and show who you worship through your modesty, which is our Lord and Savior. Right. And he, and if he's telling you to dress modest. Right. And if you're not doing that. Do you really worship God or is it a Sunday only type of thing? Is it a, I was raised in this Baptist church or this Pentecostal church or Presbyterian church or Catholic church or so on. And that's why the only reason why I claim to worship God, but I don't actually care about him at all. I don't care about what he told me to do. It's just more so of a, I was raised in it. So I keep going to it, but I don't really believe. I don't really care. Okay. So, guys, if you worship God, then show it. Show it through your words. Show it through your actions. Okay? And then it says, okay, let me scroll down. 1 Peter 3, 3, 4. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold, jewelry, or the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. Okay? So he's saying, instead of putting all this flashy clothing on, yeah, that you spent so much money on, instead, yeah, show it in your insides, right? Your internal, right? Let that be flashy and good. Meaning, be a good Christian, follow God, pray, right? Do what you have to do on Sunday, yeah, and repent. And through your works, your your internal, your soul, your spirit, right, you who you are will become a better person, and you will you will glow, right. But don't glow in your external exterior, right. Don't put on all these crazy clothes just because it's what's trendy, right. But dress modest. So it keeps coming at it. Deuteronomy twenty two five quote. A woman shall not wear a man's garment. Let me repeat. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. Whoa. He just said, whoever does this is an abomination to the Lord your God. So who is this coming after? This is coming after transvestites. So the LGBTQ again. Right, because he's calling them abominations. He's saying you can't cross dress. So for the guys out there, yeah, dress like a man. Cover yourself also. Don't come out your house with a um I forgot what it's called, those white little t shirts where you can see your arms. Don't don't do that. Right. Don't run outside without a shirt. Right. Don't go outside your house with shorts that are below your um below your uh, your knee, right? Don't do that. That's, ho- that's homosexual, right? And don't go out there seeking for attention, you know, taking a shirt off and wearing these super uh, revealing shirts and stuff. Don't do that because you're, if you, you know, look super attractive, you're going to look 
you're going to make a lot of women lust after you and look at you, right? And do you really want people to do that? Do you really want people to commit adultery in their hearts or in their brain? Of course not. If you really care about going to heaven or hell, right, you'll have some respect and not dress like that, right? Not adorn yourself like that, okay? Now, First Corinthians twelve twenty three, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the great honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with great greater modesty. Right. So, again, modesty. Don't show your butt. Cover that. Cover your whole bottom. Right. Dress modest. Dress traditional, like the traditional Christians dressed, which is super modest. They covered themselves, and they were in the hot. These people were in the desert. These people were walking the desert, and they were still covering themselves. Yet, for some odd reason, people have this excuse, this garbage excuse. Oh, oh, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Uh, blah blah blah. And I need the sun. I, I I I need to take off my clothes so the sun doesn't kill me in this heat. Guys, calm down. It's not the end of the world. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Okay, these people were super modest in the heat in the desert. Okay, the ladies, the girls back in that day, right? They were modest in the desert. They were covering themselves. Do you guys not have shame? Seriously, do you women not have shame? You guys too. Do you guys not have shame? You have Muslims, Islam, Muslims. Okay, I'm not. Do, do you hear me? Muslims. Have you ever heard of a Muslim? Right. These Muslims that don't even worship Jesus Christ as, as their Lord and Savior, right? They worship Allah, and the greatest prophet is Muhammad. But them, these people that are not even Christian, have you seen how they dress? The women wear a hijab. They cover themselves. They have respect for themselves, and they understand that. And these people are in the heat. These women are in the heat. So if a Muslim woman can do it, how much more can a Christian do it, right? So again, respect yourself. If those infidels are doing it, how much more should you be doing it as a Christian where your God commanded it in the scripture? It's tradition. Stop being prideful. Stop being a liberal. Stop being an LGBTQ and crying about it, okay? Have respect for yourself. Stop, stop twisting the scriptures in your own garbage agendas for your own garbage agendas basically because that's what a lot of you guys do you guys will look at these scriptures and be like no nah, that's not what it's talking about nah man my god don't care what i wear man he just care about uh how much i pray no uh-uh yes god does care about how much you pray right as long as it's a genuine prayer but god cares about works he wants you to show it what did our lord say he said faith without works is dead just as the body without the spirit is dead. So again, dress modest. Stop complaining. Okay? Now, let me show you guys something very cool. Um, let me show you guys something. All right. Now, this one's going to be the cherry on top of the, uh, the cake or whatever you guys call it. Okay. Luke 142. In a, loud, in a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Whoa! What did that just say, guys? It says, Blessed are thou amongst all women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Who is this talking about? So, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, which is Jesus. And Jesus was in the womb of who? Mary. And who's blessed amongst all women? Mary. Whoa. So if Mary is blessed amongst all the women on this planet, right? If Mary is the blessed amongst all women, I mean, there's not one woman that's more blessed than Mary. How much do you think women should be following, following her modesty? Everyone should be following her modesty. Every girl on this planet should be following Mary's modesty if they're Christian and if they care about God, of course. 
Because, of course, if you're an infidel or a heretic, you're not going to care at all about following uh, the mother of God, uh, modesty. Yeah. And that's what it says. It says she's holy amongst women, right? Jesus Christ says, follow me in all your ways, right? And, of course, a woman can't follow Jesus Christ in the way that he, uh, he, he dressed. So who's the other person that you have to follow for women in a way when it comes to your clothing? It's Mary. Duh, right? Jesus and Mary are the new Adam and Eve. Hence why Adam and Eve fell. And Jesus and Mary did not fall. Mary said yes to the offer that they gave to Mary, right? Which is that she would have, that she would be bearing Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, right? So these are the greatest examples we have to follow, Mary and Jesus, okay? And for women, you follow Mary in the way that she dressed, and I'll show you some examples. Look at that. Look at the way she, uh, she dressed. That's modest, okay? Now, if you're Catholic or not, doesn't really matter because, first off, if you're a Protestant and you're like, no, man, I don't want to follow the way Mary dressed. I don't really care, man. You a Catholic, bruh. Okay, well, first off, the first church that was established was the Catholic Church. Okay, that's that's factual. Matthew 16, 18 to 19 says, On this rock I will build my church. Okay, he's talking to Peter, and he says, Peter, and you are Peter. Right, and what does he tell to Peter? And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever loose on heaven will be loosed on earth. If you go to Isaiah 22, 22, it, what does God tell David? Whatever you, sh whatever door you shut will be shut, and whatever door you open will be open. These are rabbinical terms, okay? And just like David had his throne, and he had multiple successors, right? It's no different than how in the New Testament you have this church, right? This throne, this church, and you have a leader, and that's the Pope. Why do you think Peter, right, was always mentioned in the New Testament before all the other disciples at a certain point? Because he was the leader of the flock. After Christ left, you had this leader on earth that led the flock, okay? And that's Peter. And after Peter, there's successors, there's successors right, which are multiple popes, right? This is why our church has 2,000 years of history, okay? We have 2,000 years of history. The Protestants don't. Look up how long your church has been around. If you go to some church, look up how long has it, it's been around. No longer than probably a couple hundred years or less, <laughs> depending what type of group you're in, right? All the early church had the view that I hold, which is the Catholic Church, and that baptism is necessary unto salvation. John 3, 5, if one is not born again of water, he will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right, and that water is physical water, as our Lord and Savior told us. Okay, so the, the to the point, the Catholic Church is the true church. Now, I'm a set of a kind as Catholic, so I believe that the seat of Peter has been vacant since 1958, meaning there hasn't been a pope since 1958, and we reject the Vatican II Council, and we reject the people in the Vatican currently, ever since the 1958. All right, uh, reason B is because they're heretics and they reject or contradict prior Catholic dogma, and it's the New World Order. They've taken over the Vatican, just like they said they were going to do. Albert Pike, um, you know, he threatened uh, Pope Leo XIII, and he said he was going to do that, that they were going to try to infiltrate. You know, Satan himself appeared to Pope Leo XIII, which was our Pope, and said that in 75 to 100 years, he'll take over the church. And what he meant by that is the physical church uh, in Rome, which is the Vatican. And he did exactly that, you know, sorry for my screech, but he did exactly that. He took over. Now, does that mean that the gates of Hades provoked against the church? Of course not. Since the gate, uh, since the church is the, the members, right, the members, not a physical building. A physical building can get destroyed at any moment. So the church is its physical, uh, its physical members to have been baptized, right, and confess the true church, right? So again, man. Modesty is all over the Bible. If you look at the early church, you see these people with modesty. Okay. Um, and listen, if you don't want to go outside your house, uh, covering yourself like a 
like Mary, right? And it's sad, man. It's sad that a lot of you guys don't want to do this. I mean, woman, you don't want to do this because Muslims do it. Muslims cover themselves. And they don't even care about Jesus Christ. They have a fake Jesus. They don't care about Mary. They don't care about the mother of God. Yet our Lord and Savior taught us these things in the scripture, man. He left us uh, the template, I guess you can call it. The rules, really. He left us the rules. And you guys are just throwing it away. You guys don't care. And for the guys out there, stop being a piece of trash. Okay? Don't be gay. Don't be an abomination. Dress properly. Okay? Cover yourself. Okay? And a lot of you might say, well, what about the beach? What about when I want to go to the beach or pool? Guys, what is wrong with you? You can go to the beach and cover yourself. You can wear a long sleeve shirt for the guys, by the way, for the guys. You can wear a long sleeve, uh, long sleeve shirt or you can just not go at all. What's so cool about the beach? You can just go there for the view. Okay, what's so uh, the whole beach thing, by the way, guys, is a new thing. People weren't going to the beach. A couple hundred years ago, people weren't just going to the beach. That wasn't a thing. So again, unless it was private, like people would go to little rivers and lakes, but privately, right? But again, guys, you don't have to go to these places. Fight the good fight. Avoid it. And for women, you can't go into those waters in general, uh, in general, because if you go into it with any type of clothing, it's going to come out and you're going to be soaking um, and you're or you're going to be super tight, like your clothes is going to be tight, and your whole body's going to show, right? And when it comes to guys, it's a little bit less, because of course, guys get more tempted, like when they see a woman, and they can see all her parts, they're going to get more tempted, and they're going to lust, and they're going to commit adultery in their hearts, or mind. But it's, you know, a woman out here are going to say, yeah, but that's their fault, that's not our fault, well, that's retarded, right? That's retarded. Obviously, if you if there's a coke addict and you have coke in your hand, although you yourself might not have wrong attentions, but you're like, you have the coke and you know this dude's a coke addict, of course he's going to go crazy and he's going to want to get the coke. Duh. Duh. Stop being a liberal. Stop trying to argue back, man. You guys are, and the reason why you might, you guys might be like, why, why are you arguing like somebody's there? Well, it's because I know how people are, man. People are demonic, right? People don't like the truth. People don't like to face the facts. That's just what it boils down to, man. People don't like facing the facts. But anyway, guys, I hope I kind of helped you. Um, dress modest. Take some advice. And subscribe, like, and comment. Share the video if possible. And I hope you guys keep watching. Tell me some other videos you guys would like me to make. And I'll make them for you guys. Anyway. Take care, and God bless you with a true faith. Bye-bye.